Hi everyone and welcome to this quick tutorial where we're going to see how to create simple animations in God of War with powerful embedded events using c -sharp logic. So by the end of this video, you'll know how to set up a basic transform animation, how to call it from a C-sharp script, and how to inject events at various points to trigger a callback function. And to learn all of this, we're going to work on implementing a little chest system where players can open the chest by using an input action and then get a reward inside once the lift has lifted up. Of course, don't forget that if you want to get the files of this tutorial directly, you can have a look at the GitHub repo with all my Godot tutorials over here. And as usual, since we'll be coding our logic in C Sharp, make sure that you have a version of Godot with .NET enabled. But now with all that said, let's dive in and discover the basics of creating animations with events in Godot and C Sharp. Alright, so first of all, let's see how to make a basic animation in Godot. Our goal will be to have the lid of the chest rotate up, to open the chest, and give its reward to the player. For now, you see that I've just prepared a simple scene with my chest model inside. So now, to create the animation, the first step is to add a new node to the hierarchy of type Animation Player. You see that as soon as we create this node, Godot opens a new panel at the bottom of the editor to edit the animation resource inside this player node. Now, to actually create the animation resource, we can simply go to the animation button over here and click on the new option inside. We can then choose a name for animation, for example, here let's call it chest open. Like in many game engines, the Godot animation editor works by stacking one or more tracks next to one another to control various properties on the objects that you want to animate. The nice thing with Godot's animation player node though is that you can actually control any property you want on any node in the hierarchy of your scene. So typically here, we can very easily animate the lid of our chest. To do this, we can do the following. First, while making sure that we have the animation editor active at the bottom, let's select the lid object in the hierarchy. You see that now in the inspector, every property has a little key icon next to it on the right which allows us to add a new animation key for this property inside our animation at the current frame. So for example, we can scroll down to the transform component and add a keyframe for its rotation at the beginning of our animation, with its current rotation of 0 on all axes. You see that because it's the first keyframe we're adding for this property in this animation, Godot offers to auto-create the track for this property in the animation resource for us. Then, we simply need to drag the timeline head to a later time in the animation editor to place our second frame. Except that you see we're blocked quite quickly, cause for now, our animation only lasts one second. To expand it, we need to use the input field in the top right corner of the animation editor and increase this number. Note that if you prefer to work in frames rather than in seconds, you can change the mode with this drop-down in the bottom right corner. Ok, and now that we have more room, we can add our second frame with the top lifted up by changing the rotation value and then re-clicking on the key icon to set the second frame. And that's basically it. If we click on the play icon in the animation editor, you see that we now have a basic rotation animation that opens the chest by moving the lid. But just a little bonus, if you want the move to be slightly more realistic, it can be neat to play around with the animation curve, and instead of using the default linear behavior, have some ease-in and or ease-out effect. By the way, note that if you're not too familiar with this concept, I've talked about it in the context of Blender animations in this tutorial, but the idea is totally transferable to other software, like Godot. And so here, if we select both our keyframes in the track, you see that now in the inspector we have an easing property that shows us how our keyframes value evolves between the two keyframes. So this is the interpolation function that the engine uses to auto-compute all the intermediate values between our two manually defined values with the keyframes. For now, the easing is linear, meaning that it increases at a steady rate. But if you click and drag on this curve, 
you see that you can pull it to a side and make some different custom easing for your keyframes. For example, by making this kind of exponential shape, you get a slow beginning and a fast end. Or you can also right-click on the easing block and pick something like an ease in out to have a slowdown at the start and at the end of the animation, which is a bit more realistic than just a linear movement. Okay, so now with this animation in place, let's see how to actually start this animation when we press some input. In this second part, we're going to see how to play our animation when we press some interact action key. Now, of course, in a real game, you'd probably also limit the opening of the chest to a certain range, meaning that the player should be close enough to the item to interact with it. But here, we'll just suppose that we don't have this range feature and look only at the input to trigger the opening. Okay, here, we first need to define our new input action in the project, so simply by going to the project settings panel in the input map tab and adding it to the list. Don't forget that if you want more info, I discussed this concept of input actions in details in this previous tutorial. We can call our action interact, and then let's add a new c script on our chest root node to implement the callback logic for this input. Basically, in this chest class, we're going to use the process function to check whether our action has just been pressed, and in that case, we'll call the open method. So this private method in our class will simply get back the reference to animation player component and call its play function with the name of the animation to start. So it's our own animation, chest open. Also, as a little additional feature, let's add a text in our 3D scene that says interact while the action is available and then disappears when we start to open the chest. This way, players will instantly know which chests still need opening. We can do this easily using a label 3D node, and in the inspector we can set its text to interact, for example. Then we'll simply bring it slightly above our chest model, and finally, back in the script, we'll say that in the open method, we also remove this node from the chest hierarchy. And alright, we now have a basic system that allows us to open the lid of our chest when we press a given input key. And to wrap up this tutorial, it's time to discover how to boost our animation with some events to trigger our final feature and show the reward panel. So a very nice thing with Godot animations is that in addition to setting keyframes for node properties, so transforms, colors, textures, and all that sort of stuff, you can also add a really cool type of track, which is the call method track type. What this means is that you can actually have an animation call a specific method in your code at a very specific moment in its timeline. For example, here we can use this feature to bring up a little reward panel once the chest has finished opening. So before working on this function trigger per se, let's first prepare our chest reward panel. We'll just make a basic UI panel, and by the way, don't forget that if you want to learn more about the basics of UIs in Godot, you can have a look at this previous episode of the series, where I discussed it in more details. Now, of course, since we're focusing on the animation and the animation events here, we'll just make some basic static panel. Even if, obviously, in an actual game, you'd have some system behind this, to generate the reward on the fly depending on the context and the type of chest that the player is opening. But anyway, for now, let's just prepare our little panel and have its OK button at the bottom close it back by creating a new function in our chest c -sharp script and linking it from the signals editor. We'll also make sure the panel is hidden when the chest is instantiated using the ready function. Now, of course, at this point, we could just show the panel when we trigger the open function. But if we do that, we'll basically be masking our nice animation entirely. So instead, let's rather extract this line to a new function in our script called show reward panel and go back to the animation editor to add our animation event. So we'll add a new track in the open chest animation of type call method track. 
And the final step is just to right click on the track to insert a new key. And you see that Kado shows a pop up where we can choose the function to call at that keyframe. So let's just pick on new show reward panel method. And here we are. If we run our game again, you see that now we can press our interact action to start the animation. And then when it ends, our method called triggers and the reward panel shows up. So here you go. You now know how to create a basic animation in Godot and how to boost it using a called method track to trigger C -sharp script from the timeline. So I hope you enjoyed the video and of course if you did, feel free to like it and subscribe to the channel to not miss the next ones. And as usual, don't hesitate to drop a comment with ideas of Godot tricks that you'd like to learn. As always, thanks a lot for watching and take care.